Right. Welcome to the 30 minute hour. It's the personal development podcast for authors, entrepreneurs and career professionals who are looking to level up and become unstoppable. I'm your host, Eric Twiggs, your procrastination prevention partner. Joining me as always, you know him as the super CEO, the business strategist extraordinaire and all around good guy, Ted Fell. Happy Thursday. That's right. Got Thursday. Again, Eric, on a Thursday. Our Monday show is now a Monday and Thursday show. I truly believe that because we're on here every Thursday, it seems like. This is another one of those special edition Thursday episodes. David, he I always mean, tells me that, David. He always tells me. <laughs> it's special. So why is this one so special, Eric? Well, again, you know, it, it's another one of those excuse busting episodes. Yeah, excuse busting, right? absolutely. You know, p- people are gonna, they're gonna when they, after they watch this, they'll be really be thinking about their finances and thinking about planning ahead and not you know waiting around and ending up in a place that they didn't want to be. Yeah. This is be one of those. Nobody's gonna have any excuses after watching this. Okay. No, no. In fact, they're, I'm gonna be asked to be on on a Monday next time. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go both days, Monday and right. Thursday. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Good stuff. Looking forward to it. Oh, man. Well, as you can tell, if you're still watching, this is not your everyday podcast. That's right. We do things a little different on the 30-minute hour. Uh, you can watch us live on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and on YouTube. Um, you can also listen to this episode later when it gets downloaded to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and any of those other places you like to listen to your podcast. And by the way, don't forget to share the show. Share the show. Share the show. Share the show, David. Share the show. Even yeah, if you're here, share the show. Hey, our Instagram's picking up, man. So when we put this out there, you never know. I, I, I think our best... Uh, we had 21,000 on a post last week, or so I'm like... I don't know what's going on lately. Maybe getting 3,500 to 5,000 views. I don't know. I, I think it's my hashtag. We want those shares. Share the show. That's great, That's David. Right, David, share the show. We, will, right. we will share it. Absolutely. I might wife, uh, you know, put a nice little graphic, move it around, and, you know, we'll put a little clip in there. And then, you know, when you're on our show, we'll take clips from that. And actually, we post them on TikTok. And uh, it's like one-minute clips, things like that. We put them in there. And uh, that seems to be pretty successful. So we'll get we'll get you guys some love. We want that. We want yeah, that. That is great. So Ted, see you see why I, I do these Thursday episodes. Oh, oh yeah, no question. I, I no doubt for me. I I knew it. I knew it. I was just kidding. I knew there was a reason. <laughs> well, let's just make sure it's not. Hopefully, on the day it's where we don't we get like a thousand. We need you on the day that gets like the right. twenty. Right. That's you what never, we want. You never know, man. It's hard to tell. That's right. We approve. We appreciate a thousand, but we really appreciate the twenty thousand. Yeah, and then you guys have put me out of business. It's cool, whatever. <laughs> no, no, we all in this no. together, man. No, I know. I'm just kidding. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, our goal is to help you to laugh, to learn, and to level up. So, in all seriousness, if you feel like we did accomplish that, make sure you share the show. And Ted, as Ted always says, even if we, <laughs> even if we didn't. Even if we did share it anyway, give us another right. shot. Do it next week. Give us another shot. <laughs> give us another shot. <laughs> All right. So, Ted. Yes, Eric. I've got something that's on my mind. Please share, Eric. All right. So, I want to talk to you for this next moment about how to avoid flipping burgers when you're 70. <laughs> <laughs> you like that title? <laughs> so, Ted, that, that title is going to be. Come back to us here in a little bit. You'll see where I'm going here. Okay. How do you avoid flipping burgers when you're 70? And when I think about that, I'm reminded there was a story of this business owner. His name was George. He was meeting with his general manager who worked for him. And the general manager's name was Ed. So normally they would have their Monday morning meeting at George's office. But this day there, there was something different. George decided to take Ed out on this field trip. They go out to this gorgeous field. And as they're walking, George, he he points to the blue ocean on the left. Then they continue to walk. And he 
directs Ed's attention to the mountains on the right. And then he takes Ed by surprise when he stopped in the middle of this big field. And he says, you know, Ed, if you keep working hard for me in another five years, all of this will one day be mine. <laughs> so it's not like coming to America where he was going to move up to fries after the salad, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. But, but here's what Ed took away from the conversation. And, and, and this can really keep you from flipping burgers when you're seven, if you grasp this. So this, this is the part of the show. We, we just need your undivided attention. I know you like to listen to us while you're driving, but this is where you need to really pull over to the side of the road. I know you're listening to us as you're working out in the gym. You need to press pause on the treadmill. <laughs> Whatever Ted's doing, you just need to press pause. I added a little bench press this right. week. Right. You, almost right. some, you almost did some Detroit leaning there. You know what that is? No, what's the Detroit you lean? Lean back a little bit, and you got your you got your fist a little bit over the steering wheel. Just like okay, Detroit okay. Leaning. That's how you do it. That's how you do it in Detroit. Yeah, that's what they call it. It's in a pretender song called um, uh, "Brass and Pocket." She mentions that in there. The Detroit lean. The Detroit lean. All right. So, so is there anything else the people need to do to focus? You got to put the ham sandwich down, David. Right now, put the ham sandwich down. It's about to get good, Eric. What you got? Again, this will keep you from flipping burgers when you're seven if you really grasp it. Here it is. Here's the big takeaway. Live for today, but plan for tomorrow. Hmm. That's it. Live for today, but plan for tomorrow. Yeah, I wonder Very who wrote important. that, right? <laughs> What's that? I wonder who wrote that. Yeah, I've I heard that somewhere before. <laughs> So that, that leads us to our guest. So our guest today, who actually, if you look at the description of his book, it does say that, live for today, but plan for tomorrow. Uh, and he's the author of the book, I'm Not Flipping Burgers When I'm 70. He's a financial coach. He helps people to live for today, plan for tomorrow, like we just said. He's got a background as an established corporate IT project manager. And he's the host of the Something on My Mind Personal Finance Podcast. I like that name. Absolutely. So he's a financial coach who provides comprehensive planning for budgeting, debt management, home ownership, and tools to invest for the future. Please join me in welcoming to the 30 Minute Hour Podcast, David Malonis. Hey, hey. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sirs. Appreciate it. It's an honor to have you. Honor. Welcome to the show. All right. Well, let, let's go ahead and get started. Let's roll the clock back. I wanted to give some, give the people some context. So as an undergraduate of Davenport University, what did you want to be when you grew up at that time? When you were undergraduate, what was your career plan at that time? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> I when I was a kid, I wanted to be a garbage man, and then uh, then I wanted to be a baseball player, and then I was pretty good at it for a while. I was always pretty good in sports, but I'm not, you know, I'm five foot six. That's that's I'm not Jose Altuve. It's not happening. And um, you know, that's probably one of the biggest problems in my life, to be honest, is I never really had a path. Mm. Just didn't. But I was always good with money, and I learned that from my mom, and I learned that from my grandfather, who worked in the coal mines at 14 in Kentucky. And um, law, the bridge version is like I know that the with my grandmother at the time the house burned down and the only thing they got out of there was a chest of drawers like a Duncan Fife, and they mm. came up to Michigan and went to a steel plant and he got a job there, and he was there for his whole career. So, but he built everything with his hands too. So like there's a cottage up north on the river and everything in the house was there and you know he's from the south so everything was like backwards too. So like the outlets are upside down. But, you know, he knew how to do everything and build it. And so you start seeing the value of actually putting your hands on something and uh, taking the value of what it is. So the mindset becomes, I want to, whatever I touch, I want to make it last. And whatever mm. I have, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm left with like lemons, I got to make lemonade. But if I even have something I can spend a few more bucks on to get some bacon, I got to take care of it. 
And so the idea is to buy things that last and choose things that last, things that, um, you know, they're quality, but you have to be part of that equation. You can't just think about, um, I can go do this, do that. You got to do, you got to like put some like actual thought into what you're doing with the things that you have. You got to care about what you have, what's around you. You have to care about the living room that you live in. You should, hold, you should care about everything. And mm. then that, it sets a, like a very simple formula, but you know, my mom was divorced and I didn't have a great dad. And uh, I also saw how she struggled with money. And so when I was in an undergrad, um, I just knocked her off from job to job. I always worked. I worked since I was 14. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're like kind of all the start, at least with the book, because that's where it's going to lead to is I just was always good with money. And then one, one day, some guy was at Ford Motor Company. Some guy said he's like going to make a second, um, second, see, an, in an interest payment only on a second mortgage. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? No, 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 no. I was like, what do you mean? Like, you don't want to do that. First of all, you should even have that if you can avoid it. But, and then like the light bulb went off and I was very good at making presentations. So I started actually going and put this book together. I thought I could present something. And, uh, but the information that I put in there was all public information. It's not like anything I would tell you even to this day is not something I'm making up that I have some formula. I just mm -hmm. have maybe different pathways. I have a couple unique things that make it different, but I just went and studied like anybody else would study anything like a welder and learn to get good at your trade. Mm -hmm. I put this book together and I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. I had no idea, but I got published and I couldn't believe it. And you know, didn't sell a whole lot, but it gave me credibility. And, um, and that's kind of where that movement started. Hmm. So that, did you find that like, as you look back, were people coming to you for like financial advice or you, so you find yourself always counseling people with their finances? How did that look? Yeah. Um, yeah. To this day, we still do that. My wife and I too. My wife is a CEO of a nationally recognized wealth firm, like giant firm. Number one, number one in Michigan, I think. Mm. And so point is she has the wealth side and trusts and wills and all kinds of state planning and all that kind of, and, and, and money like, and then I had the budget side. So together, you know, we, we really meshed well, so going back a little bit, we do that today, but also in the beginning I was helping people out. So I would do it was like, like, a, I guess a side hustle before they called them side hustles. And, mm -hmm. um, but I just enjoyed it. It wasn't necessary to go make money and I never really pushed it to go be that as a profession. I just want everybody to be successful and it's honestly not that hard. So mm -hmm. I, it's more like an altruistic thing that I'm doing rather than someone who's a financial coach and that's what they do for a living. I'm mm -hmm. kind of backwards. Interesting. Interesting. So based off of your experiences and knowing what you know now, you get that call to give the commencement address at your alma mater. What advice would you give to the, the class of 2022? Um, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> no. Okay. I would, it was, it was just the, it was just the S word. You have to give a crap. Honestly. Yeah. But that's not just money, but man, I was, we were talking earlier. You have to like, if you don't know what you want to do, that's cool, but you have to be constructive. And so maybe have a hobby or two to go build up something because it creates confidence until you can figure out maybe what else you want, because 90% of, of the businesses out there are, they're entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. And then most of them also fail within three years. However, while you have the ability to go out and have your dreams and everybody's dreamy this in this generation because of social media and all the and my marketing means so much more than it ever did in my opinion. And it gets into people's faces and they get FOMO and then they also maybe get just as confused about what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And so I certainly wouldn't say sit around and do nothing. You got to have, again, you got to have purpose doing something hobby wise. You should go work somewhere regardless if you don't like it or not until you find out what else you want to do. You got to earn, you can't sit home on your butt. That's not constructive and it's not fair to, um, even if your guardian or parents are allowing you to do that, if you're in that spot, you know, I think you should go and have con purpose. And then if you hate it, you eventually you won't like that. You'll be forcing yourself into this doing this, some, doing something else. And sometimes you just got to go work for a couple of years, go work for something. You might hate it, but you know, like then again, it pushes you out again, but you do have purpose and meaning you make some bucks. And then if you hate it, go save some of those dollars, but don't get caught up in all the FOMO. Don't get caught up in the, um, at that age, it's FOMO. Don't get caught up in any of that. Like, just don't care about what other people think because I hate to say this, but when it comes down to it, you have a, maybe two really good friends typically that you can rely on in life because it means what I'm trying to say is no one gives a crap. 
You just <laughs> think you knew. David, David, we we must say I must say that we appreciate the fact that you asked if swearing was acceptable. Yeah, we've we've had some guests here that they swore first and then they watched Eric and I go, <laughs> <laughs> and then some of them didn't pay attention. And they swore they swore a second time. So we appreciate you asking. Yeah. It. We don't yeah. really swear too much in our in our media either. The S word pops in once in a while. Every now and then, yeah. No, I guess yeah. cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So it, it was interesting. Like a lot of people think that, okay, I don't know what I want to do. So I'm just going to kind of wait until I get inspired. And just from my experience, it doesn't work that way. Right. It's like you almost have to, like, you're, I think your model is, hey, you know what? I'm interested in personal finance. So I'm going to start doing that. And then it, as you started doing that, it seemed like other doors opened up. So, so talk about that. I think the value of just kind of staying in movement. See, it's like the, what is it, 10,000 hours to become good at something? Who came mm -hmm. up with that, Edison? And uh, the point is, is that you basically, because you get good at something, if you keep doing it and it's your choice to do it, especially, that means you like it. And mm -hmm. then as you get better, then it opens up doors because you're like, well, I've already achieved these things. I know what this is. I can do this with my eyes closed. So what's next? So then you start thinking about, what am I going to do? And like, for example, I was never an entrepreneur. I mean, now I am kind of with this show and we're branching out to some other things. I know we'll get to that, but um, that wasn't the model I grew up in. I grew up with my, again, my grandfather with hard knocks and I you know I have, I got, I went to schooling, but this wasn't in my pedigree, but I mm. appreciate someone who does, but in the same token, because I was doing something as an art project, that book alone, which sold probably 500 copies. Every time I go to an interview, they ask about the book. They don't care about me. So okay, yeah. it opened doors for me. And then I learned about money in other ways. And um, like when I'm home right now, I just have CNBC streaming across. I'm always listening, always thinking. So I found ways to make money without well, while I was working another job. So could I make some money helping people out financially? Sure, but that wasn't a big deal. But I made, uh, I've made a fair amount of money buying stock options. I learned mm. about them. I didn't do it overnight. I started as a young man um, in a stock club. That's how I learned mm. about that. And then um, I've even found... I've even found ways to make money gambling without losing my money. I actually profit. So those, you know, and I had a second home, so we just sold that, took that money. So I've always had like a side gig going on, and I'm 51, and right now I could retire. My wife and I could retire. Now, and I worked for the man mainly, or I had to work for the man while I was doing this stuff on the other side. So you don't have to be an entrepreneur, but you have to think like one as a person in order to do something else because – Usually, if you just work your job and go home every day, that's going to get stale, man. And you're not going to have, you got to have other avenues to go out and do other things. So, you know, wow. just slice a few hours a week and find something, start small. You don't have to do it overnight. Just build up. Just find something you like and get good at it. And then, you know, you know, ever talk to somebody and they go, I didn't know, like, I talked to some girl I talked to at work, like, her husband's a train conductor. I'm like, who's a train conductor? It's like, well, the, well, actually, he does. He puts the cars together. The engineers are the one who drives the train, but you know, he's gonna have a pension at fifty. Who knew? I'm like, okay, there's still a pension out there. The guy's gonna retire at fifty. It, as an example, like, you, there's so many things out there you don't know. You just have to actually keep your eyes open and look around and talk to people and look at things and, you know, don't watch too much TV. <laughs> you know, that's you know, that's interesting that you said. You don't have to be an entrepreneur, but think like one. Like that. That's that was profound. Like, Thinking like, you know, like so, so how does one really go about thinking like like one? Well, when it comes to at least money, personally, you and you know, kind of asked this already, but I didn't answer right. Maybe is you have to you have to care again. Like mm -hmm. finance number one, if you can't take care of your own money, you're going to be screwed no matter what you do as a venture or a side hustle. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, like people like if I come like pillars, right? So it's like pillars in life to people are like friends, family, career, maybe religion, if you follow one, um, things like that, right? Maybe your health, maybe leisure, but no one puts the like managing your money is one of the pillars. And it's ex one of those should be up there no matter what. So you have to have that in gear because if you don't, you're never going to make it. And so the, the crappy thing about it, the sad thing about it is that there's people out there in the world that. Everybody can go on the internet and get free stuff. You can listen to your show. You have a great show. I listen to it. I, you go to my show. You can go to Dave Ramsey, listen to him free. You know, he's different, but you can, it's Millionaire Next Door. Go buy the book for two bucks on sale. You can find resources. It's, it's not even that hard to do. But 
So with that being said, the part two of your question is, um, I was telling Eric a little earlier, we, um, we did this show and started like our podcast, which we're going to branch out from, but we couldn't get there until we built the platform and got good at it, like I was saying. And this studio we built in here, is, it costs a lot of money. Costs a lot of money. And we could afford it, and we knew why we were doing it. And then we got good at it, and now we're like, now there's other avenues. So this gets back to creating other avenues because you get good at your craft. And this basement, it's awesome. This is a great place. I absolutely can't. I'm so satisfied that I did it. And now we get to do a show and help people out. But when the answers are there, the information's there. When someone says that they can't, if they can go out and make a living and pay their bills and and pay rent and um, drive a car and maybe travel a little bit, maybe one, tr I don't care, whatever it is in your world for what you make, it's its how you manage your money. It's not how much you make for most people. So if you have the ability to live on your own, you're wasting your time if you get to 65 and 70 and you're forced to retire and then you can't live the same lifestyle because you're forced out. It's a shame mm -hmm. when you think about it. And that's the biggest crime of the whole thing. It's, it's like an epidemic that no one talks about because no one manages their money. Wow. Yeah, so most of the population in that 65 to 70 year age group is in that situation where they're not financially independent. Mm -hmm. So it, you just mentioned all the information that's out there. You can Google it. You can watch a YouTube video. You can listen to a podcast like yours. Why is it that so many people are still struggling financially? Well, I think it's because they're not taught. So like my grandfather taught me how to do construction. So I, it's naturally in my blood. If I go to school and our, our, our country is built on debt, like the national debt clock, you can go look it up. It's like $200 billion a minute. That's how much it goes up. You can't run an institution like that anywhere else. It's, money's not real. It's just a, a way to have products and services traded. So now you're playing with all this out there that you're just in a, you're in a game, you're in a maze and a labyrinth and, um, kind of lost my train of thought, but it's, it's, it happens. It, it, it happens yeah. because I'm having my senior moment at 51. Man, let me tell you, man, this is our show, man. Just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> just go with it. It's just not that hard guys. It's, it's, you have to, Again, because the education is not there, it's not important to you, and you can do just enough to get by to do what you want to do. So, hey, you know, I'm in college, and my buddy's going up to the bar. Can I afford it? No, but I'm going. I don't think about that. Can I throw on the credit card? Sure, because I can pay later. They don't think about when I have $100 of interest on my credit card, as an example. They don't think about that. As long as I can make my minimum payment, I can keep cruising along and doing, again, back to the FOMO because I want to go and have a good time and do what other people are doing. But the funny thing is, is, you know, seven and a half of those people in 10 at the bar don't have money. Oh, they wow. just, you just, but it, it all depends how you look at it. But there are so many ways to live a quality life and the same life you live now. If I sit down with anybody, there isn't anybody that can save up a ton of money and they don't actually lose the quality of their life. It just, I could give you examples all day. Like I'll give you a couple. If someone said, I've done the math. If you you skip eight coffees a month out of 22, if you if you go into work or you drive to Starbucks, there's 22 working days per month typically. Skip eight of those cups, save that $83, pack it up, and by the end of the year you have about a thousand dollars, and that's the average amount of money that people spend on the holidays every year, mainly Christmas. And if you put that money aside on an account, you could pay for it, and then you won't have a credit card bill. It's 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 not like so what I I I drink coffee at home eight days out of 14. It's, it's not that hard. It's just people have to go look at the information and go and think about it or just simply say, man, I'm blowing all this. If you sat home for a month and said, I'm not eating out once and just looked how much money you, you'd go, you would just go, I got, I got more money. Like, where did this come from? Because it's five times as much to eat out than it is to stay at home. Buy a bottle of wine, it's trip double the cost at the, at the, at the restaurant than it is at home. Like, there's ways to do it if you're, you're struggling, you don't make as much as somebody else. And once in a while, save for yourself. Or if you want to treat yourself down the road, then put a few bucks away when you can go for that occasion. But if you, again, if you can live on your own and most, and most households are two income, you can still do some cool things in life. You don't have to be completely sheltered. You just have to have a little discipline. Hmm. Wow. So, so David, you have like a, like a checklist. Right? Um, yeah. Like, well, on my, in my book, it's basically my, the book I did write is basically a textbook. It's mm. I didn't know what I was doing. So they told me if I would have had it in like the schools, I probably could have been retired a long time ago. <laughs> but I didn't know what I was doing. It's like yeah. a textbook. It's 341 pages. It's eight and a half by 11. And if you and you go on the website and the first 10 chapters are on there about the, the budget, if you go and read that, 
even today with some of the numbers being out of date with like 401k and certain things, if you follow all of those principles in there, you will save money. It, wow. It's so the checklist is there. I break it down very, very detailed. Like it's not confusing information. It tells you every single step. I have pictures of grids left and right, watching it build up. Like there's nothing hidden. You don't have to sit there and go, what was that? I can go right there and see it. And it gives you ex examples of exactly how to do it because the math itself really isn't that hard. It's the maintenance. That's what's hard. Mm. You should, I could tell you another story. When I met my wife, she had negative $1,200 in the bank. She was abused, bankrupt. Um, not much before I, um, uh, we got together, um, uh, abusive husband, physically, mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. um, bad shape. And we talk about this. This is one thing we do. We try to, again, some of this, we talk about the relationship side to help people because it's real. We had like dirt and then I got wiped out in the financial crisis with my divorce. And then, um, I actually, <laughs> so I was forced to refinance and I was like, and they were contract jobs for a long time. So that was kind of like, um, my way of working for myself. I get 10, 10 and nine and go work for companies and charge them a rate. And yeah. Well, the economy was crappy. So like, you know, so we both were in bad shape. I was way better than her and I didn't have all that emotional stuff and I had more money, but I didn't have a ton at the time. And we're talking 10 years later, we're multimillionaires and we worked our ass off for it. Now she's, and she broke the glass ceiling. There's a whole story David, behind her. David, 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 you just broke the, the code. You, that was a nut, you know, you, 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 you said. Did I? Did I swear? You did, man. I did. I didn't even. I didn't even know. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you worked. You worked it off, though. Ah, uh, once you just get rolling, man. Yeah, just it, I'm, just, I'm just giving you a hard time, man. That's I, a good, that's, you, are, you are. You are fine. You are that's fine. A good one. Kidding, I, I would have kidding. not have known. I would have had to went back and listen, or you probably would have cut it out. So no, no, it kept it in there. It was good. So you, that didn't mean to interrupt your your thought, man. So <laughs> that's funny. But I mean, anyway, I mean, I will say this. We worked hard. She worked hard. Um, she makes a really nice, we make a really nice living. I'm not going to lie. However, yeah. we worked to get there. And I was, I went to my brother's. Here's a good example. I was 40. Um, I, I actually got an 800 number and had it forwarded to my phone in the car because I lost my contract job and I had to refinance. So when the number was forwarded to my phone, I acted like the HR person at my old job just so I could get my refinance approved. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't try that at home. Don't, don't try. Don't, don't follow my advice. But it shows you what you do when you have to be crafty when you're boxed oh, yeah. in a corner. Um, but so I rented the house and I was and when I got divorced, I got full custody mainly. And uh, I went to my brother's and I went to get a master's degree and I stayed in his house for five months in his bedroom. And my son hung out with his closet and he was close to and I was 40. I'm like, I'm no catch anywhere. But I'm like, I'm going to go do this because I got to go reset the button. I need to clear my mind a little bit and resurface. And that's where we are today. And, wow. and I, so gets back to like, listen, you have to think like an entrepreneur. I did side hustles. I made money. We invest well. We also don't, we're not frugal. Like this fire movement thing you hear about, like, <clears throat> I think it's great in a lot of aspects, but it's, it's like, I don't want to be frugal. I want to live my life so I can do the fire movement and not be frugal. And so, you know, that makes the difference, but you know, now we, and what it does is it gives you options in life. You can start going out and branching out to other things now because, because you put that work in, you can't just go to bed every night. You can't, mm. you got to do something else outside your normal routine. If you want to make it, even if you're just a straight entrepreneur, you're working 80 hours a week until you make it. And some people never stop working the 80 hours. Wow. So now what, so, so during this, uh, pandemic, right. So I'm sure, you know, people were trying to, you know, find ways to, you know, to, to make money and stay afloat and losing jobs. I mean, I'm sure you had some people that were probably coming to you and asking for some, you know, some, some advice and things to do anything to share about kind of that, you know, those times. Yeah. I'll give you one good example. We had a, a friend of ours who, um, we mentioned it on the show one time, like just a little nugget and, um, she's a travel agent. Mm -hmm. So you know how that was going. Wow. And, um, she's like, well, I have this Jeep. And I think she pays $600 a month for it. And so she sold the Jeep and then I'm like, well, let's see, let's add the rest of this up. No gas, no insurance, no maintenance. Like you're probably mm -hmm. saving 800 to $900 a month alone that she chopped off and she was home anyway. So her life didn't change. And now, so she made a pivot kind of like me going to school at 40 and made a, a, a difference. Right. 
Um, mm-hmm. That was like the kind of the most prominent example because not everybody likes to share those stories, and that's what we mm-hmm. put out there. Um, but this always so we talked about this a lot. This is if you have not learned this lesson from the pandemic, at least like we when you, if you listen to our program, we talk about this have enough where. This is where the emergency fund comes in. You have to build up cash. It's, you know, in the finance world, they call it the survivor number. If I'm not working, how much money do I need to pay my bills? And now you can turn the temperature down and lower your electric bill and you can uh, cut back on the food and eat. Now there's like, so you, you know, you can, you should construct this in your budget to say, this is what I would live leanly Mm. if this happened. And then I need three to six months because typically it takes that long for you to get a job. Now, Mm. if you're like, in service, which a lot like 40% of restaurants will never come back. Mm-hmm. So if you're waiting tables, um, for example, uh, you know, it, it, you got, you, I would like to think that people are going to go, wait a minute. I don't want this to happen to me again. I can start stuffing money away again when I start working. Like my wife, she goes to people who make 12 to $17 an hour, even without the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And uh, they do 401k big plans. And they have people on there going, I can't, I can't, I can't put, I can't do this. She's and, and her job is not to get them to do it. Her job is to give education. But she says, listen, if you put, tw- tw- can you spare $25 a check? Can you just, can you do it? And then she, uh, she gets a lot of them to sign up. And then when the year is done, they put in a hundred dollars a month. They have $1,200 sitting there at the end of the year when they never had that $1,200, even though I can't take it out without penalty. They're like, I had $1,200. I never thought I could do this. Wow. So it can, it gets always, it's kind of the theme here. It can be done. And I, every. You don't have to do it overnight. Everybody's situation is different. You know, the NBA and NFL players lose um, a high percentage of them go broke within three years of retirement, and they make a ton of money. Even a guy in the NFL career is about three years average, and but he probably brought in some nice chunk, which is more than mo- most people in a family will ever bring in over all the years of working, and, he, you know, he blew it. You know, so it doesn't matter how much money you make. It's a matter of how you manage the money that you have. I keep saying that, but um, no one's immune to it. If you don't follow and some people just make so much damn money, it doesn't matter, but mm. that's not the norm. It's not. Wow. Interesting stuff. So I want to talk about the book. I'm not flipping burgers when I'm 70. So, so how exactly did you arrive at that title? I didn't want to end up like an old guy behind a, you know, I'm sitting at like a, like a diner and I just see this guy flipping burgers and they smelled good. But and he was <laughs> and he's good at it. And I yeah. love those guys because they're like talking of their older wise. And uh, but I'm like, I but I think, you know, he was doing it because he had to do it. Mm. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. And you, and you guys are, you know, you're not spring chickens and neither am I. I don't know how old you are, what, but you know this. Wait, what, what, what? Thank you, man. Well, you guys don't have any freaking wrinkles on your face, though. What's up with that? Like, well, you know, man, it's it's. Yeah. Personally, I'm still a millennial. Tay <laughs> so. This doesn't help. Tay is no spring chicken. Let's I, di- I, di- I dyed this beard this color, uh, David. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. I, I believe you. <laughs> it's kind of like that thing you're like, I, if I see something that, like, here's another thing. Like, my grandparents, like, you know, back in the day, 55, 65, you're going to die. Most people are going to yeah. die. They don't live that long. And so you're talking at that point, 80s, getting in the 90s, 90s. No, I'm going to say more like 80s, 70s and 80s as a kid going up there. And I'd see these people who probably work for the factory and they have a little trailer and it's it's great. But they sit in these green and white striped chairs made of aluminum and they sit in there all day and do nothing else. And I'm like, wow. I don't want that to be me either. Mm. So it's like I want to make money and not have to work, but I also don't want to sit on my butt at the same time. And so I took those two examples and said, okay, you know what? I just don't want to be flipping when I'm 70. Now it's like people are flipping burgers in their 70. That's a, it, it came true. I wrote this in 2004 and it's, it's true. That's what happened. Mm. It sucks. I hate it. I, I hate it. I hate, I hate it. And then now that you're flipping burgers, it sounds like it's just kind of an example of ending up somewhere that where you have to do something you really don't want to do, mm-hmm. but there's other examples. Oh, plenty. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's yeah. there's millions. There's millions of them. Mm-hmm. Most people who Most have a lot, a lot of wealth. And I mean, my wife came from where I told you I've eaten dinner in billionaires houses. Mm. Doesn't matter. 
you're always going to work no matter how much money you make or you're going to be involved in something. Now, granted, you have more options and choice. When people ask that question, um, can money make you happy? The answer is absolutely. But <laughs> <laughs> don't, let them let, don't let them tell you otherwise. That's right. But if you're not good in the head or you have a mental problem or a physical problem or something like that, then money won't do anything. It might help you pay your bills and feel good about that, but it can make your life a lot easier if you have your, um, your life in order. Mm. So, right. We all just try to struggle to make it through, even if you're a confident, healthy person. And for the most part, I am. But we all have our problems. And um, but as life is money made my life easier. Yeah. So I don't want to be that guy behind the counter. I'd rather choose to be the guy behind the counter, not the guy because he has to be. Yeah. Great. No, I think that's well said. So so who's the target audience for the book and what are they going to take away? I mean, to be 100 percent truthful, it's for everybody. Because it applies to everybody. There's no um, discrimination. But I will say this. The sooner you start, the better. Right? It's never too late to do something with your money like the 12 to $17 example I gave out the 401k. Um, but, um, you know, the thought I have, and this is like you're, not, you're an entrepreneur podcast. So it's kind of like the younger you are with hopefully no responsibilities, like no kids, no wife, or vice versa, or partner, or whatever you want. If you don't have that, that's the best time to go out and give it a shot and fail because you have to fail to succeed typically, or you can fail while you're succeeding and then you take a hit. It's not like you just always fail and make it. It can be both, but do that as soon as you can if you have an idea if you want to do something, and that's that way you don't have to answer to anybody. You can answer to yourself, and then you can find out what you like and don't like, and I think that's, that's what I would say. Um, but all the principles in that book, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. It's it's not made for, you know, a demographic, even though our demographic on the show and that people would read that is probably 25 to 50. But, yeah, if you picked it up, you, I guarantee you'd pick something off that I put in there. You'd probably go, oh, OK, that would be something I could do. Anybody can go use it. So, so what like of all the people you you work with on their finances, like what percentage of them? come to you where they already have like a, a budget in place. Hmm. Oh, um, what's that animal house? Did you see that movie animal house before? Yeah. And he's talking about the grade points in Dean Wormer's office. And he gets, <laughs> he gets to, um, I think, uh, John Belushi. He's like 0. Mm -hmm. point zero point <laughs> <laughs> zero. <That's> it. It's, <laughs> it's about that. Now, some people have some stuff in place. We work more uh, now in my life, my wife and I work with people also who have their um, things in order, but we tweak things. We help them grow. We've seen people like get their houses, get pregnant, get married and watch them. They're, they're like our pseudo children. So we've also seen that. So once in a while, we'll talk to them. Um, but when someone like when I was Cindy, my wife, she had nothing. I'm like, go pull out your bank statements for an entire year. And let's look at it. And then you, the, and everything just starts, all the light bulbs go off. The epiphany goes off and like you usually get one main thing. And hers was, I was buying my kids love because you know, we, we had such a bad life. So if I was able to give them subway or Panera driving home from work, I made them happy for a minute. Mm. And so that was kind of her light bulb. Everybody has their own, a person who helps people with their money. Um, what I do is I say this. I'm not here to, I'm not a Dave Ramsey. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to beat you up and tell you you're, you're an idiot because that's what he does. And that's his style and he's done very well at it and he helps people. It's cool. But I don't work that way. I'm going to go, all right, I might say, listen, this is probably not the right move. You probably already know this. I'm not going to beat you up about it. What I'm going to say is what can we do now to make it better? And I am a big proponent of why we're doing things, even though I have the knowledge on the, where I want you to be a part of that decision-making process because then you'll actually take ownership. If I just go tell you what to do with everything and you walk away, you're not going to retain it. So it's like, all right, you, you need to buy clothes every month. <clears throat> well, you were spending 500, let's just say. Okay, you decide how much you want to spend. And then you go through the whole budget as an example and you find out, well, I still have no money left over. Okay, make a move. Go reduce your cable bill. Go start streaming, save money. Go buy your tires online. Don't eat out as much. Like you go all day. And you start shaping it and then you can work into the emergency fund and the rainy day fund. And then you want to get to like, okay, you got to make a plan to get these credit card debt, uh, this debt out of the way that all that kind of stuff. And you build a plan. And then eventually once they get one of those things done, like, um, 
paying off one of the credit cards, like the snowball effect. It's mm. confidence. You feel good, right? If someone can mm. turn and like, like you can't put six months away worth of income for your emergency fund right off the bat. There's no way you got to build up to it. But if you turn around and said, Hey, I got $400 there after four months, they're like, Oh, this is cool. Like I'm doing something. I, now I got confidence. I'm gonna start paying attention because this is what happens guys. Once you work with somebody and you go through all of that, they never go to the dark side. He doesn't, Luke Skywalker doesn't hang out with Dark Vader. It doesn't happen. <laughs> they never, they never flip unless they run into a problem. And I get it. Some people have lives where they're, they're, they're poor, they're in rural areas, they're in the inner cities, but we're just talking on the framework of you can go out and make money, have a job, and we're going to start there. And, and then you just treat everybody as their own individual based on their situation. And most of those rules apply, but someone has to do it on a smaller scale than somebody else who makes more money. Mm. Like the guy today, like, I know I'm rambling. Like there's sometimes in the back on a stream all day. Um, I don't, it takes me eight times to watch any one episode of one show. Cause I'm working, I work from home or I listen to finance and then I got to take a break and I stream undercover boss. Mm. Right. And I love it. Cause most of those people are like, you gave me this and that. And like, all they want to do is have a little few dollars and pay their bills. Right. But the kid who makes eight dollars an hour was working at Popeyes, and the lady there, the undercover person's like, "He's like, what do you want to eat?" And he's like, "Well, I want to go eat at uh, I don't know Wendy's." And she's like, <laughs> and he's like, "Well, because I don't get a discount here." Hmm. It's like, okay, that was a good move. But the other, the thought in my head is, why are you eating Popeyes for lunch? Don't eat Popeyes for lunch. Bring your own lunch hmm. when you make eight dollars an hour. Yeah. So it's it's mental. Wow. Eight dollars an hour like doesn't do else. Let's do crap. Eight dollars an hour isn't going to get anywhere. So don't spend money that you don't have, even if it's not on a credit card. Hmm. No, that's good stuff. I mean, I think it, it, like everything else, it starts with a mindset and just really be, being disciplined with your plan. And, and so you're also the host of the Something on My Mind podcast. Let's talk about that. Well, what do people get when they tune in? Well, we like the Cindy's off the show right now a little bit. She's on like a temporary leave, but um, some audit things, but she'll be back soon. But what we did when we developed this was we wanted to basically tell our story from what I told you in the beginning from where she was. And we take that 10 years of experience as a couple, but also, you know, raising kids in a blended family. But, but mainly, you know, there's always a finance chunk. We kind of mix it all together. The point mm. is we talk about all things finance. So there's pretty much anything that we can't do. It can be crypto. It can be margins or margin. It can be home ownership. It can be, is it better to buy a lease or a car or lease or buy a car? Um, wills, trusts, um, 401k, you name it. Like there's nothing we can't pretty much talk about because between my experience and her experience, we can cover everything. And so we're like you guys though. We like to have fun. We don't want to make, uh, make it boring because finance is boring. <laughs> yeah. So really? like we wave an icebreaker every show, like we do like a round table. What'd you do this week? Something fun, something cool. We just BS with the producers for, you know, five, eight minutes. Like when you guys do, it's cool. Probably the funnest part of the show actually. And then, um, <laughs> you go, I know, isn't that funny? I'd rather just go ramble, but no one would listen. Right. <laughs> right. Everybody right. loves to talk, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so we do that. Um, and then we like usually do some offbeat topic at the end. Like, would you rather, would you rather like smell B have BO or, you know, um, smell everybody else's BO. Like, you know, sometimes it's this day in history, <laughs> just this thing's for fun. Like we don't want, we don't talk politics. We don't talk religion. We don't, um, we don't talk anything out there that's negative. Cause everybody else does that. We want you to like you, you have an hour show roughly. We're like maybe 40 minutes to an hour. Why don't you just drive and enjoy yourself. And our, our banter is the couple seems to work pretty good and people like it. And that's where I think the success is coming from. Um, and I also, every week on Thursdays, I put out a, um, a, like a one and a half, two minute personal finance tip of the week, really short. Like I mentioned earlier, you could buy tires online. That's one of our most popular ones. Buy tires online, slightly used. They're practically new. They probably took them off our possessed car. Um, you order them and they ship them to your door FedEx. And then you get them, they mount them at the tire guy up the, up the road for 30 bucks a pop and you saved half your money for the same tires. Mm. As an example, and I didn't have to go shop for them. They were at my door. I put them in the back and I dropped the car off. Another one is simple things like cut your candle wick down by half every time you burn it because you're going to extend the life of your candle 50% up to. And candles are expensive. It's little things, man. Like you should run your dishes every night. Like don't use water. You're using like 
double the amount of water that you actually rinse than what you actually you only use four gallons of water in like a more of a newer dishwasher, for example. You should never rinse your dishes except to get the scrapes off. Throw it in there. You're actually saving money in your water bill and you're helping the environment. So you can go on all day with like tips. And so we always like to give a little nugget every week. And so that's that's like the basis of the show, really. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, it sounds like you really heighten people's awareness to these money saving opportunities that are all around them, but they just haven't been paying attention. Yeah, definitely. Not, not paying attention or they didn't just like look at their own money and go, hmm, like I'm going to put a tip out maybe next week. It's, it's like, for example, on your auto insurance premium, if your deductible standard is 500, if you raise it to 1,000, you lower the premium, right? And the odds hmm. of getting in an accident aren't very high. It usually happens at some point. Well, then go put some money aside every month to make up the other 500. So in case you get in the accident on the thousand dollar deductible, the money's sitting there. But over time, because your premium's lower, you're actually saving money. It's mm -hmm. it's just things that maybe I'm just unique and I think about these things. I just like it and I like helping people. Again, it's not frugality. You don't even have to be frugal, and you can if you want to. It's just information that can just make your life better, and then you feel good about it. And at the same time. We talk about products a lot that um, can save you money and actually help the environment at the same time. So any pro like we buy coffee pods that um, they're all biodegradable. The Keurig pods are the bag, the packaging, everything's biodegradable is an example. And we save money than going out to, to make it and it tastes great. It's a simple little thing. So I could go on all day with, with, with tips, but um, there's plenty of products out there that you can buy that actually, again, even if you pay a little bit more up, like, here, I'll give you one more. I, this is one of the cool ones, things I bought. It was one of, an arc lighter. We light a lot of candles, and it's like a spark plug. Mm. And it, it sparks right in here. You yeah. plug it in by USB, so you're not using – so by the time you would use that lighter, it's about 50,000 um, sparks. Mm -hmm. um, you would waste 336 Bic lighters. Hmm. And I paid $14 for it. Wow. I buy um, silicone bags, so we don't we don't use Ziploc bags at all. Silicone bags, they're uh, rubber or silicone durable for the fridge, and they're washable. And the ones that aren't washable, we use them to put like chicken or whatever else in. So I haven't used we and uh, I haven't. It's been four years probably. We use bamboo paper towels because they last six months. I go on all day, and yet you're saving money and you think you're spending more because you're like, I'm buying a, a roll of paper towels that's nine bucks. It's like, but you got to look and say, what am I getting out of it? Yeah, this is good stuff because we're focused on a lot of these little things. Like, what what about like paid subscriptions? Like, I know that that's an issue for a lot of people. Whether you sign up for these things, it's nine ninety nine a month. It's this, it's that. that yeah. Oh, no problem, and it adds up over time. Did you run into that a lot where people just have this piles of paid subscriptions that they aren't even using anymore? Big time. Like, actually, I was even myself. I had a family Apple Music plan, and I'm like, I don't think my wife's used this. I've probably been paying for this for three years, and she, and I'm like. The other day, I finally go, are you even using this? She's like, no. So I'm like, so I gave away five bucks a month for three years. No big deal. But I'm like, those things. See, like, here's another Apple one. For example, um, what, how these companies can get you is they're smart. Like, Apple will say, I'm going to give you um, a Apple TV for mm -hmm. a year or six months. Mine was a year. It doesn't cost you anything. And when it starts, it's five bucks. And it's like, I don't care about $5. I mean, I'm not looking at every dollar to the T. I have a bucket for just spending money and crap. Now, for Amazon, I will put away $10 a month in a side bucket to go pay for it because I don't want to go throw out $120 that was unexpected. So mm -hmm. I, I cover that. That's one way of budget, too, is you look for the future and have all the money there. But when it comes to subscriptions, um, Spotify is another one, right? I, I use Adobe to do this to, to do the editing on this show. Yeah, they can add up like crazy. The world in the United States, everywhere it can be, is all going to be subscription-based. Anywhere that you can do something on a monthly basis where they rejuvenate you. Um, the, actually, probably who started this was the car. Think about it. Like the cars, you've been leasing cars for a year. They've actually based kind of – that's kind of a subscription model because then they get you into another new ride, and it's like, hey, this thing's now – that's yes, three years old. You got this car over here. And if I can keep your, keep your payment even within like 10, 15 bucks more, they're like, all right, well, I can do that. And mm -hmm. then, all right, so you're paying more and they keep you in the car. Your phone's another one. But now phones are changing. Now, like mm -hmm. I traded my phone in for a grand, my Apple 12 or 11. They gave me a grand for it. So I maybe will pay $200 over the next 
two years until it's upgraded and they'll give me another thousand for that phone again. So that's kind of changing, but that's the kind of mindset, like subscriptions are everywhere. It's not just like apps on your phone, <clears throat> but you can go to like probably your Google, your Android or go to your Apple and you can hit the subscription button and it'll give you a giant list of what all those are. And, and I just called mine recently and realized maybe I just, you don't need it. And you just, it's because you forget and the money is the number is so small. And that's why everybody does it so small because otherwise it would be too expensive. And people go, I don't want to pay 30 bucks a month for this, but I can pay like seven ninety nine, and then they forget mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Let it run. Wow. No, you, you know, companies, you know, when the key falls out of the ignition of the, the, of the, the GM cars a few years back, this is kind of a loose example. It's tragic. They killed like 11 people, whatever it was. But it doesn't hurt the company. Don't people don't mm. start stop buying the stock because they they account for that. Mm. Just like when you get a gift card, they got to put money in arrears and you know accounts receivable, and so they should be sitting there. And so when they, someone uses the card, then they account for. It. But back in the day, your gift cards used to expire, and they knew probably mm. what percentage of people aren't going to use these things. Maybe it's let's say it's twenty five percent. They're like, I'm making money off of you because you're actually not even going to use the gift card. Mm. It's smart. Absolutely. It's a smart business. They're not dumb. They're there for a reason. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it tastes like you and I talk about this. The goal, their goal is to get, get a lot of, a lot of people to give a little bit of money. That's it. Consistently. Yeah. But the That's funny thing is, is when people group together to make a change, right? You can go, go in history. Anytime there's been a march, it makes a difference typically. Not all the time, but typically does, or at least makes you think at the, the least. But now look what's happening. The biggest movement now is that people are now I'll give you a restaurant example. We know a lot of, we eat out a lot. We know a lot of people and they're like, um, the guy will be like, listen, here's what happened. Some people came back after they weren't getting any more unemployment checks and stimulus checks because they were making more money to stay home. And then there's people who are like older and like, I don't want to go through this pandemic crap again. I'm beat up. I'm older. I don't want to do this. I quit. I'm just retiring, whatever. And then there's the people who are like, I don't want to deal with this, so I'm just going to go work somewhere else because I can go work on a line and make more money with less hassle, with better hours. Mm -hmm. So this whole pandemic and then like in the corporate world, people are like, listen, I can hold out. So when I was, I took three months off in the summer, my phone's ringing off the hook. So it's like, all right, well, I'm going to go back because I don't want to give up this money because I, I just want to work right now. I had the option, but so now it's like, People are like, listen, I like my quality of life. And maybe this is the I irony where people are not good with their money, but at the same token, maybe they might be better because if they stay home and realize I can spend time with my family, I don't have to spend two hours a day in total getting ready and driving into work. I don't have to, if you will, pack your lunch or go out and get lunch. I don't have to waste gas, maintenance, and all these things. I can be home and go to the bathroom right there and go get food right there when I want. And so when I'm home, I make dinner, I sweep the floor, I do laundry, I, I do whatever, I do all kinds of stuff all day long. And because I'm home, so now they can go to companies and go, listen, you know, I'm going to hold out. Some people like live with their parents longer. Like the average person, it's between 18 and 29 years old. 52% of the population is living at home. Mm. It's a big number. So if people hold out long enough, that's where like the, 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 the safety and number starts taking place. Mm. Interesting. So David, what is next on the horizon for you? Um, we just put our merchandise site up, but that's not really what you're asking. But that was my newest thing. Um, we are, my wife and I are in the process of writing a book about our story. Um, we've been talking to publishers, and um, it seems like there's a, um, a market for it. There's a niche for it because there really hasn't been a, um, a husband and wife, um, like on a maybe relationship. It's not necessarily financial. Talks of, I, I, I'm writing and tell you what we did and how we did it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not making it finance and it's about our whole relationship from day one to 10 years and how we be, be we grossed our wealth. Um, and so I think that'll probably within the next year, it'll be out. Um, we're just, again, we're kicking on the publishers right now. Um, but I think we kind of zoned in on one and, um, I believe basically we have a good enough of a story that, um, I guess again, it's just, it's, it hasn't been done before from these two, two type of people from the, the funniest and the banter. And then, um, I think we, from there, really, our ultimate goal after that is this would be like a, a kind of a, a conduit to the podcast. And then we like to go out and start hitting the road eventually in the next couple of years, hopefully, to just start speaking to people. And we'd like to do some free things and then go monetize. Honestly, just to pay the bills. We don't need to get the biggest slice. It's not what we're in it for. But if we're going to go on the road, I want to, you know, I want to pay my bills doing it. And I, why not? That's if someone wants to pay us to do it. So 
that's what we're kind of trending into right now. And so um, we just got to you got to spend a little time doing it. It just takes a little time, but we're really excited. And, um, but the whole purpose is just to help people. And we're really looking forward to doing it on, on a broader scale. That sounds great. I mean, you just an amazing story. Just based on if, if it's anything like what you've told us, I'm sure there's all kinds of details that'll be in the book that you haven't talked about today. So definitely we need to go out and pick up a copy of that once it's available. Well, if you want to know how money I made money on options, I'll tell you as an example. Like it'll tell you how we did it. It'll tell you how we made this decision on a kid or not a kid or, you know, how we like, I'll give you one more. I know we're getting long on the tooth here. Here's one mistake people make. Um, you buy a house. There's two mistakes. One is they buy a house. You keep refinancing. You're refinancing typically for 30 years again. So if you're like 50, 60, 40, whatever, you're going to be 90 when you, if you do it at 60 till you pay that house off. People don't, they think, well, I got a lower payment. It's like, no, you started a 30 year mortgage over again. Hmm. Number two like what we did is we downsized our house early because our kids were all going to be in high school when we got together within three years. So we bought a foreclosure um, after the financial crisis and um, we paid $156,000 for the house. And so we love the house. It's what we wanted. And now it's the best investment we ever made. But here's the, the other part of it. When you have a house and a property and you have the, like your personal home, you have the ability to go pay that off extra money. You don't mm -hmm. want to do that. And that's what mm -hmm. people do. You don't want to do that because you'll make more because if I'm paying 3.37 on my 15 year mortgage, I can go make seven to 10 percent in the stock market. So I'm making more money over there. So even if you had a house that's worth eight million, if you can put money, don't make any extra payments on it because the math will always support you'll make money actually investing it on the side instead of paying the extra payments. Hmm. So those are things that will be in the book, like nuggets on that, like why we made this decision. Right. And then we know that a house goes up three percent in value typically a year. And I don't know what it's worth today, 350. And we owe like, I don't know, 94 grand on it. I don't even look. I, I pay, I almost pay all of it, all principal at this point at, at the moment. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Again, if you read it, we're just, we're pretty open about things. I mean, Cindy got hit by a car two years ago. There's all that in there. We get, she had COVID in the emergency room twice. The woman's been through a lot of crap. So we got, that's all coming. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> and okay. walking across the street, just got hit. Yes. Yeah, no, it's been a it's been an interesting two and a half years. Okay, well, definitely, if yeah, people need to check the book out, uh, it's now time to go around the horn, and this is the part of the show where we each leave a closing thought to help people to become unstoppable. David, you're our guest of honor. What's your final closing thought that you want to leave the people with? This is it. Don't care about what other people think. Stay in your lane, do what you want to do, and you'll be successful. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Very true. Very true. Oh, That's it. Tough. tough act to follow. It's a tough act to follow. I, you know, I, I, I'm still kind of stuck on that thinking like an entrepreneur. Right. I just think that that's something that everyone needs to to think of because, you know, there's so many people that are like, oh, yeah, I just want to I don't want to do that entrepreneur thing. I just I just want to I just want to work. I want to work. I want the stability of having a job. And, and, you know, and and I guess, you know, for everything that's happened, you know, within the past, you know, year or so with the, the pandemic. Right. I mean, at any moment, like that job situation can be rocked. Right. And so thinking like an entrepreneur, as you said, David, you know, can can put you in a place where you're just, you're always, you always got, you know, like you said, a side hustle or something going on that you can generate some money and then, you know, try to take some matters in your own hands. Right. And I just think that that's something that we all should be, should be giving consideration to, and then being able to, you know, you know, invest that money, put that money aside. And then, and then also David, all the things that you shared about just ways to, to save money. I mean, you know, I guess it makes you think, and it's gonna be, they, once you get into it, I think everything you do, you're probably going to be thinking twice, right? Yeah. So no matter how bad some, some kid wants fries, you're like, no, no, you're not, we're, not, we're not having fries today. We're not having fries. We're going to go home. You'll we're forget make about it three minutes later. If you drive away, you'll forget That's, about it. You don't really want those fries. Yeah. You don't really want those fries. Although the McDonald's fries are – I don't eat fast food, but, man, they were they were good, and I'm still they're still good today. <laughs> look, look, that's what I that's what I hear, Dave. That's what I hear. <laughs> but no, thank thank you for thank you for those tips. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of a lot of good information. Absolutely, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Good comments, Ted. So my, my around the horn, it, it kind of goes back to Dave. A lot of the things that you said shared on this episode, it boils down to those little decisions, right? And I've just found like success in most things boils down to those little decisions that you don't think about. Mm -hmm. You know, the decision to eat out or to not, the decision to get this subscription or not, the decisions to start setting a budget or not. Just those little decisions. You think it's the big things, right? Mm -hmm. But you think it's buying the car. But over time, it's those little decisions. And if you can get good at disciplining, you're disciplining yourself on the front end with the little decisions. That can help you to get to where you want to go financially. Yeah, you absolutely. couldn't have said it better, man. The little things always add up. Yeah. And it's all about heightening your awareness to those little things, those little opportunities that are always around you. And I think listening to your podcast and getting your book, getting your book that's coming out can really help to heighten people's awareness. To hey, man. It, you know, guys, if we get one person listens to this show, let's, for example, and they're, um, kind of hyped up right now don't do that thing where you're like hey this is cool and then, you know the next day you kind of think about it right and you're like all right this is cool and then by sunday you're like i forgot about it yeah, like, all about. don't do that like if you think it's cool and you have an interest in it and you know you because you already know you need to do something if you're that person don't blow it off go spend a little time go start with something small and then you know then you might get hooked okay. awesome well, again we, we we're thankful david for everything that you shared on this episode well what's the best way that people can connect with you you can go to something on my mind dot net that's the website you can get you can read the first 10 chapters of the book you can get the podcast transcript there's some other education um we're on all social media um instagram TikTok, facebook it's all at somm dot podcast and then uh, like you guys we're all over the streaming platforms to listen to the show wherever you want to go i'm sure it's there that's great. Fantastic. Fantastic. See, I told you this was one of those excuse busting yeah. Thursday episodes. You see, it's not your everyday podcast. I definitely want to make sure you go back on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and re listen to this episode. Make sure you got a notepad handy. You got to put the ham sandwich down, like Ted says. Put it down. <laughs> Pick up the notepad, put the ham sandwich down. And it's probably like stacked really high, too. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, again, hopefully we, we helped you to laugh, learn, and level up. So please make sure you share this show. Share the show. Share the show. Absolutely. Share the show. Share the show. That's right, Dave. Listen to Dave. Right. Feeling it. Share the show. Instagram followers are share coming. This show. Hashtag share the show. Absolutely. I mean, he, he really dropped some financial nuggets that can be a game changer for you. As long as you apply them. So awesome. This has been an awesome episode of the 30 Minute Hour podcast. Make sure you join us for the next one, uh, Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern. Until then, have a great one.